City Council meeting for the City of Hudson for Monday, September 16th, 2013. This time I would like uh, uh, Joey Halverson to come up and join us or lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Eagle Scout candidate. You can come right up here if you want. Okay. Please stand. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. This time we take, uh, oh, roll call please. Mayor Birchill. Here. District 1 Morissette. Here. District 2 Yakub is excused. District 3 Bernard is excused. District 4 T. Winkle. Here. District 5 Hoggett. Here. District 6 Vanslow. Here. At this uh, point in the agenda, we have uh, open mic for anyone that likes to talk to the council or talk to the council about any item that's not on the agenda tonight. Is there anyone here other than the Hudson Home and Garden Show that would like to speak to the council? If not, uh, ladies from the Home and Garden Club, if you could come up or come up to the mic and give us your name and tell us why you're, yep, right up to the, on the other side of the podium. Tell us why you're here and tell us about your calendar. Well, I'm Terry Butler. Jane is co-president of the club. And uh, Jackie Deharsh is a member of a committee that, um, that I work with. Uh, and we have published uh, a calendar uh, featuring photographs of the Hudson area. Uh, this year we're celebrating five years of the calendar. The first four years we've sold over 2,000 copies and we've received so much support from the community, uh, Main, Main Street vendors and some people collect the calendars, some of them get sent um, all around the world. And we're just so happy about this, we wanted to present you with a copy of it and we invite the audience to buy their own copy um, and other members of the council. Um, you can find them for sale on many uh, Main Street retailers um, and up on the hill. Um, and the money that uh, we make uh, from the sale of these calendars go back into the community. We've put in um, quite a bit of money into the new library location the last three or four years. Um, one of our members spearheaded the project uh, replanning Berkmoss Park and our funds and other community supporters uh, funds went toward that project and we're just celebrating this and we thought you needed a calendar thank you very much and uh, I would recommend everyone get a chance to buy one because they, they are a good cause they're great looking calendars all right they're they're just uh, stunning photographs okay so you can show it off to the okay thank you thank you Watch yourself on the cords. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Thank you. And they've got my picture. No, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> They're great calendars. Uh, just a quick change in uh, agenda items. We have one. Uh, uh, Joey is here with the Eagle Scout Project. Does anyone have any questions for him? If not, we can uh, let him head out. But if uh, it's on consent agenda, but he was here if you had any questions. That went through Park Board, correct? Yep. We don't have any questions for you, so thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Consent agenda. Madam Clerk. To approve the regular meeting minutes and closed session minutes from Jill, um, September 3rd, 2013. To approve claims for payment in the amount of $255,114.03. Additional information is available in the clerk's office on request and is posted on the city's website. To approve the issuance of four regular operator licenses for the period September 17, 2013 to June 30, 2015, contingent on payment of any outstanding debt that is owed to the city. To approve transferring $150,000 from the general fund to create a special revenue fund for the June 20 through 21, 2013 storm-related costs. To approve the Brian Lettenbach Celebrate Life Fun Run at 9 a.m. on Saturday, September 28, 2013, beginning and ending at White Camp Park. To approve the Willow River Super Fun Walk and Run at 9 a.m. on Saturday, October 26, 2013, 
beginning and ending at Willow River School. To approve accepting the bid from Consolidated Energy Cooperative to deliver gasoline and diesel fuel to the Public Works Facility at 1522nd Street from October 1st, 2013 through September 30th, 2014 at a fixed differential rate of plus four cents per gallon. To approve the issuance of one taxi driver's license through June 30th, 2014. To approve the requests of the Celebrate the Holidays Committee and Hudson Hot Air Affair to designate the following community events. Light up night on November 29th, 2013. Candlelight stroll December 6th, 2013. Reindeer in the Park December 7th, 2013. Hot Air Affair, February 7th through 9th, 2014. To place on file the Board of Review meeting minutes of September 5th, 2013, the quarterly report of the City Clerk and the monthly report and comparison of, of audited financial reports from 2007 to 2012 from the Finance Officer. To approve the Eagle Scout project proposal from Joel Halverson to install a concrete walkway at the Cratley Lane Playfields. That is all. Our motion for approval. Move to approve. Is there a second? Second. Roll call. Vanslow? Yes. Haggett? Yes. T. Winkle? Yes. Morset? Yes. Kurt? Okay. First item business uh, from finance is consider bids received for the purchase of a pothole uh, patch recycler. Tom? Uh, the pothole patcher um, trailer uh, recycler um, was an item that we did not have on our capital request. Um, we had done some repairs uh, last year and we thought that that would last for a while. Uh, we did, uh, the trailer started acting up again, so we did some checking and the repairs would be uh, uh, more than the value of the trailer. So. Um, we just felt that it was an important piece of machinery that we should uh, consider purchasing a new one. Uh, we received two bids. One uh, bid did not meet our specifications. Uh, so we'd like you to consider um, uh, purchasing a uh, Spalding trailer from McQueen Equipment for uh, the base bid was $46,037. Uh, Extended warranty is $550. Uh, Trade-in of our 2005 trailer is $4,500. And total bid was, um, with trade, is $4,157. Uh, we're requesting that we use some of the remaining funds from the 2013 wheel loader. Um, but I guess the Finance Committee requested that the funds come from the remainder. The rem difference would come from? The difference would come from a balance in the previous capital, capital projects on correct Neil. Yep. and in finance I talked a lot about the importance of the trailer um, it's a machine that we can use uh, next spring February March when the asphalt plants are closed we can uh, have a stockpile of either recycled asphalt or we can purchase uh, hot asphalt this uh, fall we can uh, Hard, you know, get, let it get hard and we can break it up into chunks, stockpile that and this fall when, or next spring we can uh, recycle and reclaim that used uh, asphalt. Uh, hot mix we purchase is quite a bit more expensive. It's $150 a ton or if we can use this uh, asphalt or even purchase asphalt, reheat it, uh, that's about $50 a ton. So we're going to be saving a lot of, uh, you know, some funds with the recycled asphalt along, we'll be able to get asphalt when we need it in the spring for our you know, spring pothole repairs. I'll move we approve the purchase of the uh, asphalt from McQueen Equipment and contingent, well not contingent, and use the uh, leftover funds, capital funds for $26,000. Okay, is there a second? I'll second that. Okay, questions for Tom, anybody, Tom? Neil, maybe you want to clarify exactly yep. where the funds will be coming from. 
unused, unused capital funds. Uh, right. Some will be no, I, I think as Randy stated it, that would be correct. So $26,000 would be money that would be coming from our, actually our carryover balance from 2012. And then the, the additional year. funds would come from the wheel, the portion of the wheeled lo loader appropriation that was not used for the purchase this year. Yes. Everybody okay with that? Okay. Any other discussion on it? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, unfinished uh, business update on project. Both. Morning, Karen, or good morning. Good afternoon, Karen. <laughs> good evening, Mayor. The uh, 2013 stream improvement project, they've been working out there on Hanley Road doing the concrete work, con uh, curb and gutter removal and replacement, manhole adjustments. And they did move to Gateway area today. So they're going to get those areas done before they, they start the milling so they can have everything done at one time. Lake Malibu storm sewer outfall number two, the, the trees have been planted on site. Red Cedar Canyon, the base course and the surface asphalt uh, course has been placed on those three cul-de-sacs there. Stage line road roundabout, uh, the concrete work is completed. And this weekend they did the paving of the base and binder course. Uh, we were hoping to have the wear course done this week. However, we have some concerns with some constructability issues out there. So we contacted the engineer, BKBM, and asked them to hold off on the wear course until we can resolve some problems. Any estimate on when it might be open or don't you know? I'm, I'm hoping by the end of the week we have the surface course on, okay. but because of some construction issues we're looking at, I can't uh, tell you exactly when it okay. will be done. Anybody have any questions for Karen? Thank you. Okay. Uh, consider uh, <coughs> new business or old business. Consider pur proposals and consider resolution 17-13 authorizing the issuance and the sale of general obligation corporate purpose bond series 2013A in the maximum principal amount of $3.490 million. Uh, and it will also be addressed in the resolution 18 as well. Well, let's do, can, can we do one at a time and then we'll get to the next one or can we do them both at well, the same time? Uh, Sean is well, here, I think the they'll be doing a presentation separately. on both. Yep, yep. Uh, and then we have the considered proposal of the consideration of the resolution 1813 authorizing the issuance and sale of 2.9 million 25,000 uh, 200 uh, general obligation promissory note series 2013 B. Sean, you want to give us a little update? You bet. Uh, we've got a couple handouts, Meryl. They look very similar. I apologize for that if you take one and move it around and Patrick's got the other. Okay, thanks Patrick. Okay. Uh, maybe just to uh, back up for a second before going into the results of the sales that we had today. Uh, if you check with all the council members, did, did you all receive uh, this document, uh, which was the official statement or the prospectus? This went out to uh, potential bidders and was used today when they were formulating their bid for the sale. Uh, it, does, it contains a lot of general information about Hudson, as well as a lot of specific information about the two issues uh, that the mayor just uh, read the, the resolution language for and agenda language for. Uh, the other purpose for the official statement is we use that document along with uh, a number other background information in sitting down with Moody's Investor Service to update the city's bond rating. And so if I can have everybody, if we could start with the, one, the report that says sale report and 3490000 in general obligation por corporate purpose bonds. If you go in uh, a page into that, uh, you'll see the report that Moody's Investor Service has provided to the city regarding the two issues today, as well as the rating on all the existing general obligation debt that is outstanding. 
Uh, last week, a week ago today, uh, the mayor, Devin, Neil, Denny Darnold, and myself sat down and had a conference call with a representative uh, from Moody's Investor Service. We spent, I think, a little over an hour talking about what's going on in the city, uh, how are the larger employers doing, how are the uh, ta larger taxpayers doing, what's, uh, what projects are, is the city involved with. Uh, Denny spent a lot of time talking about potential de economic development initiatives in the city. So we, um, we had a very nice discussion with them. And what I like to hear at the end of those discussions in, in today's uh, still somewhat unstable economy is we don't see a lot or we don't see a lot of downward p pressure. That's what we like to hear because many communities, uh, particularly in the last couple of years, bond ratings have come down. I think recently the uh, city of Minneapolis went down from the AAA level uh, down to a AA1. So those, those do occur uh, more so in more stressful economic times. That was not the case. So now if we're focusing on the report for Hudson, a uh, lot of good comments in here, a lot of good information. I would say right now with the uh, Moody's affirming the AA2 rating for the city, AAA is the best, AA1 and AA2. Uh, I think the city has positioned itself to do uh, everything that you can do to control the rating you're doing very well on. Some of the things are out of your control. Size, uh, you've had a little bit of decline in values. This last year went up, but you had a couple years where it was going down. Uh, you're doing very well on your fund balance for the liquidity. That's a big strength. And I think if, if you continue to grow uh, as a city and as the tax base, I think there is the potential for you to move up. But where you're at right now, I think the A double A two rating is is a is a great rating and completely representative of what the the work the city has done, uh, management and, and the council to uh, to have a strong strong books uh, and and do a lot of activity and, and set in policies to move you forward. So I'd encourage you to read through that. What's nice then when we've got the report in, then we're taking this affirmed very strong rating out to the market uh, when we're looking and soliciting the bids. So with that in mind then, if we uh, go to a couple pages in there, the report is a number of pages, uh, wanted to spend a second with you on the current interest rate environment. So this is the landscape uh, page, two year trend in municipal <laughs> bond indices. The green line is the one we're paying particular attention to here. Uh, this is an indice that we commonly track in looking at where is uh, municipal debt going. And you can see from the beginning of the year and then particularly around June, there has been a, a pretty significant increase in, in rates. If you look though, we, we're dropping a little bit down with the results from last week. Uh, looking at this in the two year window though, you can see relatively flat, but now kind of on an upward trend. If we were looking at this on a 30-year time horizon rather than a two-year, we are still at a very low historical point compared to looking at, say, over a 30-year time period. So even though rates have begun to, to go up, the environment for getting into long-term fixed rates is, uh, is still a, a very good one. And with that in mind, then, we did, uh, if you turn the page to the bid tabulation, I uh, wanted to talk about the results on the first of two issues that were put out uh, for competitive bids today. Uh, this issue, the 3,490,000, was the financing for the street improvements. That's the biggest component of this. And then there's also uh, some stormwater work related to streets, uh, parks, and I believe the public, uh, public safety building, some work related to that are all a component of this uh, long-term 20-year issue. We ended up getting two bids on the issue. You, the winning bid on the first page you'll see is from Baird. And you'll notice underneath there that they teamed up with a large syndicate uh, to work with them on purchasing and then reselling these bonds. So a lot of partners working with them on this, uh, on this bid. And if you flip over to the next page, the second place bidder 
which was uh, only 10 basis points or a tenth of 1% behind was from uh, BOSC out of Milwaukee. Both of these bids, uh, very competitive, very uh, strong bids. Again, the winning bid was from Baird with a true interest rate of 3.29%. Uh, and that, uh, if accepted by the council this evening, would be a fixed rate that only future action that the council could take would change. That's through some kind of a refinancing. But if market rates keep going up, you would still, just like a fixed 30-year mortgage, you'd continue to pay at the rates that you see here. So, Sean, quick question, maybe not time, but every year for 20 years, they're selling this out, our, our bond out, or how's this... Explain this a little bit better for us. You bet. Actually, I think, Randy, if we go to the next page, it's a little easier to see how this uh, actually comes together. So if, if everyone's on Exhibit 4, the back page of this first report, uh, what I would, to, to go into uh, Randy's question, if we look at the column entitled Principal, that is the principal payment each year that the city will make to pay back this entire three million four hundred ninety thousand over the next twenty years, and then next to that you'll see an interest rate, and it a lot of them are the same, but they do change three percent out to two thousand twenty three, and then four percent for three years, and then uh, three point six five, and then back up to four percent again. What this has is each of these rates are tied to those individual maturities. So as an example. If you look at the maturity due in 2030, that's 210,000, all right? If Devin bought that whole maturity, so he now is the owner of those 210,000 in bonds, he's gonna get 3.65% on that 210,000 every year until that bond matures, then he gets his principal back. So that's, Randy, that's what they do, is they buy them in this fashion with an interest rate attached to each maturity, and then they either keep it for their own purposes, their own investment, or more likely they turn around and look for individual purchasers and sell the bonds in $5,000 increments. Okay, because I guess just in all the years I've sat here, I haven't seen us sell off every year like that. that they, I'm sorry. They, that we sold every year to different partners every year oh the, okay the uh the partners I, I i know that links up perfectly that way but that doesn't there's no link there okay. so as an, an example you'll see there's a cronin and company just because they're listed cross from that 2020 maturity that doesn't mean that they bought just that maturity is that kind of i i can understand why you might read it that way but they i don't know what portion of this they're buying they they could be buying any any or a couple years worth of this. <clears throat> Baird as the lead purchaser is representing the group and in buying the entire issue. All the bonds are sold at once, correct? Yep, yep. all, all of them go to the beginning. But are we selling each year? No, no, just no, once. no, 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 just, just once. the listing of uh, our group. Nope, they sell the whole bond at now, yeah. right? Yep, they'll take the whole 3,490,000, all of it, they'll distribute it amongst all these okay. these folks. So it's just one one sale to Baird leading the syndicate. Okay. Okay. Uh, going back to exhibit four, one last thing I wanted to touch on on here, actually two last things. Uh, the winning bid from Baird and that syndicate had a substantial premium. And so we allow, uh, we allow the bidders to bid a, uh, a price for the bonds, which can be uh, can be a little bit less than the three million four hundred ninety, because there's some upfront uh, cost for them uh, called the underwriter's discount. So they can go to that minimum bid, or they can go uh, or maximum, and then they can go all the way up and offer us a premium. And that is what uh, this bid did have. And so the other component I was just going to mention is after funding the construction projects. The, uh, the bid has an extra 112,000 in it. And what we end up using those dollars for is they go into the debt service fund. They will make part of the payment due in 2014. And what we do to kind of keep our overall debt plan and repayment for the city at the way we've talked about in our five-year plan 
is we just pay more principal off because the city doesn't have to levy next year for the interest payment because that's in this issue the way they bid so we're going to increase how much principal we pay to re repay it faster so that it fits with our overall plan okay and the other thing i was going to mention uh last on this one is if you look in the middle of the page the interest rate at that 3.3 percent is the bid from baird the projected in our pre-sale report which we had about a month ago was about 3.69 percent so about 104 104,000 less in cost over the life of the issue as compared to when we talked about this a month ago in the in the pre-sale report okay uh mayor if it's okay with you any if there's any questions on this one i'd be happy to answer otherwise i could move over to yep. the second handout if uh, any the council is on the first bond okay all right uh the second one is the uh, general obligation promissory notes and this issue has uh, two components to it this was the one where we're combining the um, shorter life assets so equipment uh, and i think a couple other items we had in our capital equipments and some other capital projects are combined with a refinancing of a 2007 issue that the uh, the city has outstanding if we go to the bid tab uh, this this issue has the same bond rating as the uh, the bond issue you can see the the bids here that we ended up getting five bids for this issue uh, ranging from the winning bid from BOSC at approximately 1.84 uh, percent out through uh, the, the last bid from uh, Stiefel which is at uh, just under two percent so pretty uh, pretty tight bidding over the five you notice we got five bids on this one two on the other one the shorter term nature of this issue uh, probably a little attracts just a little bit more uh, bidding interest uh, more that are interested in the shorter term issue now if we go to exhibit two uh, this issue is again paid back in full in 10 years our projection uh, for the issue in the middle of the page much like the previous report we were estimating a, a blended or true interest rate for the whole issue of about 2.52 uh, percent again with the results today uh, substantially below that at the 1.85 uh, so quite a bit different in uh, uh, total expense to the city repaying this one over the next 10 years this issue also had a substantial premium bid for it uh, so we were able to reduce the size of the issue uh, when we had done the planning runs for this a month ago we were expecting the issue to be about two million nine hundred and twenty five thousand with the results today uh, the issue size was able to be reduced to two million eight hundred and sixty thousand and really what ends up happening is that premium on this issue this issue goes to uh, help us borrow less money to pay off the 2007 issue so if you go over to uh, the last page exhibit three the 2007 issue has three years left to pay on it if we just left it as it is and it would uh, rates from 3.65 out to 3.7 percent uh 960,000 in principal outstanding 14 15 and 16. what's necessary to borrow to pay that off again and this is a big component of this because we're getting that premium is we only need to borrow 920,000 to pay that issue off with the premium that we're receiving and if you look at the far column on the right we're resulting in savings of uh just over 74,000. when we talked about this before it was more in that 20 24 25 thousand range so again uh, it, it worked out really well as we talked about with neil let's combine this refinancing with the new money uh, bidding them together we're able to apply that premium to pay off as much of this old issue as possible and achieve real good savings i think on uh, on the results of that uh, with that i'd be happy to answer any questions on the two reports 
the other unique thing tonight is uh, we've got Andy Pratt, who is the bond counsel on this. And in my uh, years as a financial advisor, like, I think I can count on one hand how many times the bond counsel has been at a sale. So I think it might, if it's okay with the council, might be a good idea for have, have Andy talk for a minute about uh, the resolutions. That's his role in all this is drafting the resolutions that are ultimately for approval by the council this evening. Welcome, Andy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. It's nice to be before you tonight. Uh, my name is Andy Pratt, and I'm an attorney at the Eckberg Glamour's Law Firm, and we have an office in Stillwater, and we have an office literally a stone's throw away from you tonight at the City Hall. It took me about 60 seconds to walk up the hill to, to get here. I was still a little bit out of breath uh, coming up the hill. That's, that, that, uh, that, that's my fault uh, and nobody else's. But um, I have served as bond counsel for the city in the, these bond transactions, and it was nice to work with your financial advisor, Ellers, and city staff, and, and Neil um, on these projects. I was the author of the two resolutions that you have in your packet. Um, Last week, I drafted the resolutions. Sort of, the, the the resolutions sort of contain the general covenants that you would expect to see as a city issuing general obligation bonds. So there's nothing really out of the ordinary here. It's a it's a transaction that's that's required to fund your public infrastructure projects. Um, so I drafted that, and you can blame me for the long um, page count in those resolutions. But that that's the typical. Um, process and this afternoon I supplemented those resolutions with the final numbers that that Ellers produced um, and which kind of went into the the various interest rates and principal payments that you have to make um, from your um, funds to, to uh, pay, pay these off over time my uh, main role as the bond attorney uh, representing the city as well is drafting a legal opinion at the at the end of the game here which uh, certifies that the interest rate on these bonds is a tax exempt interest rate and in order to get a tax exempt interest rate you have to make sure that the bond proceeds are used for public purposes um, you can't you can't issue bonds and, and use them for some you know speculative private venture or something like that there are many exceptions to that rule but if you're just doing your your regular public infrastructure projects that's a tax exempt item and I worked with with Neil and Sean to make sure that everything you were purchasing and doing with these proceeds was for your general public city purposes so if, if it was a taxable bond that means that you can use it for most anything that you're allowed to use bonds for under state law, but you'd have a higher interest rate, and I don't know what that would be right now, but it wouldn't be the three and the and the one percent that you got in your two bonds respectively. So that's a that's a legal opinion I'll be drafting and the market accepts that and then the people who buy the bonds and resell the bonds can get certified that hey, this is a tax exempt interest rate and we're getting the benefits of that. So that comes at closing, which I think is October 9th or so is when the actual closing on these bonds uh, occurs. Um, really, other than that, I don't really have anything else to add um, from Sean's presentation. I, I, I thank the city for the opportunity to work with you and uh, look forward to future collaborations. Um, and I stand for any questions. Anyone have any questions for Mr. Pratt? Really, the only changes from what you got in your agenda pack and what here is tonight is just the information that Sean presented. Tonight. Just numbers. Yep. We didn't make another set of copies for everybody because we thought that would. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Before we pr proceed, I just want to uh, give a little bit of a, well, a compliment to Devin and Neil and Denny. Uh, during the interview with uh, Moody's, it was, uh, I, I felt kind of proud the way uh, the questions, and she put some pretty hard questions at us, and, uh, and Sean too, but from us, we had, they had all the answers, and so they were able to give the answers right away, and I think that, you know, bodes confidence that we know what we're doing. We have excellent staff and they did a super job. So thank you to you guys. Uh, Denny's has left already, but we did a really nice job on that. And one of the other things, just as a, as a point of, uh, one of the strengths of our bond rating was the availability of land for future development. I think it's really important that we have uh, shovel ready projects ready to go or land available for people to come into the community because that's a that's a very important part of it and they kind of well they stress that in the uh, in the in their strengths and there's the other one was again that our management financially where we had a, a very healthy reserve situation because then we can if we have problems that develop we can overcome those just like our storm we were able to handle that without borrowing any money so 
That's all I had on that. Does anybody have any questions for Sean or Andy? If not, the first order of business then will be uh, resolution number 17 13. Move to suspend. Okay. Second. You get, you'll move the, the motion. I was going to read what the resolution was. Well, I'm just, I was just re suspending the rules first. Okay. Yeah. Right. Roll call vote. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules. Roll call vote. Haggett? Yes. T. Winkle? Yes. Morset? Yes. Banso? Yes. And he, here's the resolution. Resolution number 17 13. A resolution awarding the sale of 3.490 3 million dollars general obligation corporate purpose bond series 2013a fixing their form and specifications directing their exec, exec execution and delivery and providing for their payment is there a motion to accept this so moved is there a second second any discussion all those in favor aye, aye. aye. motion carries then we need to do we need to suspend the rules or are we still suspended? No, we'll suspend the rules for the next one. Move okay. to suspend again. Is there a second? Second. Roll call. T. Winkle? Yes. Morset? Yes. Banslow? Yes. Haggett? Yes. Motion to approve. Is I there move, I move to approve. Is there a second? Second. Here's the resolution, resolution number 18-3, resolution awarding the sale of $2.860 million, general obligation promissory notes, series 2013B, fixing their form and specifications and directing the execution and delivery and providing for their payment. 18-13. Yes, did I, did I not say that? You so said it's 18. Three, three, not 13. Okay, yeah. it's 18-13. Any discussion? There is a motion, isn't there? Yeah. Yep. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Real happy with those interest rates. Thank you. Okay. Um, right now we can do communications from a future agenda for any council members. Anybody have anything they'd like to add? City attorney? Uh, city uh, administrator. A couple things I had as a mayor. We had a thank you note from the St. Cor uh, Croix uh, Historic Society for the second payment of their uh, room tax dollars. Um, I think that's all we had. Uh, we're not going to go into closed session tonight. We'll move right into the next item agenda was a bargaining agreement between the Hudson Patrol Officers Association and the city of Hudson. And I believe, uh, I think I have the information. Devin, do you have that with you? Yep, you should have all received that out. Everybody got a copy of that. Will yeah. it be under the yep. closed session? No, we do not have to go into closed session. No, but will, is that the information? Or yes, it? yes. Um, so unless there's any questions. Oh, I think we should go through. Go through summary, okay. Yep. So there really are not a lot of language changes involved. Um, the with the health insurance effective 1 1 2014 which is it's a three-year contract 2012 2013 2014 effective january 1st 2014 um the police unit right this is a patrol unit we still have not re received a final communication from the sergeants um, they will pay 10 percent of the monthly premium which is the same as the rest of the employees have paid for two three years with wages um, the agreement is 1% as of January 1st, 2012, 1% January 1st, 2013, which is the same as the rest of the employees received, a half a percent on October 1st of 2014, and then a 2% increase on January, for, I'm sorry, October 1st, 2013, and then 2% January 1st of 2014. They're going to get back pay? Yes, that will be, it's already in the process of being calculated. Okay. Those are the two main main changes that were made. Uh, there's some language cleanups and basically on uh, 2014 we go from 92 percent that we're paying down to 90, or they're paying that another two percent. So the then they'll be in line with everybody else. Did did we save the funds for the back pay? Is that available? The back yes, the, that's already been budgeted for. Yep. Yeah. And that won't amount. I mean, yes, it's an amount, but it's not an extraordinary amount. 
it was Lori and I and uh, Steve Weld and Devin and uh, were the negotiating. That was, I didn't know if it would uh, get settled that day and Marty sat in also, but I think it went back and forth. We had a mediator here and uh, he would go back and forth and I think both sides uh, gave something and we were able to get it done, provided that you guys think we've done okay with this. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's a fair contract for both sides, and I, I'm in favor of it. Any other thoughts? I mean, we got a. Th we were surprised that they went with a third year, but that's of benefit to us because then that's we are anticipating we have to turn right around and start negotiating again. But yeah, right. Yep. No, we won't have to do that until the end of next year. So it's year. normally been a two-year cycle. Is that correct? It's it's varied. Sometimes it's one, sometimes it's three, sometimes it's two. It was all, when we had the other unions, it was always kind of a back and forth game between them who would settle first type of thing but this is our only union right now so there's no longer a fire well, union the they're never well the sergeants they have a union but they do not have um, collective, bar uh, the collective bargaining they cannot do uh, mediation or arbitration so they can negotiate with us it's our anticipation that they'll follow this one but we just have not received confirmation back from them yet that's what's been offered to them but yeah that's the only remaining um, bargaining unit we have was this the uh, anticipated outcome from uh, our you guys? We did all the comparisons for our uh, neighborhood, uh, uh, other municipalities within our area, primary comps and secondary comps, and I think it's well within the line of what everybody else is doing. You know, some of the other municipalities have had trade-offs where they've, the employees, all of the other employees other than the police employees are paying half of their retirement now. So some of the other municipalities around here have negotiated that in um, the way, what we will continue to pay all of their retirement but we are not making a contribution to their HRA so that's the trade-off that they agreed to so as opposed to the rest of the employees for the city where we're they're, we're giving them an HRA contribution but they're paying half their retirement yeah so that's the main difference between mm -hmm. the rest of the employees and the patrol unit Kurt you were gonna say something are you no. okay Thoughts, comment, is there a motion to approve this? Move, move to approve. Is there a second? I'll second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries, thank you. I see nothing else on the agenda. Move to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, we're adjourned, thank you. <laughs>